from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live 10 at 10. It's not something that we feel is a concern. The police department doesn't feel it's a concern. Um, somebody just wants something that they believe to be an issue to be brought to the public. People living in a southwest Fargo neighborhood are scratching their heads trying to figure out what gang stalking is after signs were posted in an apartment building. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. The signs are gone, but pictures are now making the rounds on Nextdoor.com. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker talked with someone from the company who owns the building and says that they are tackling the issue head on. Cornelius? Stephanie, Mike, Emily Piva with Scaff Apartments is leery about the legitimacy of the signs that seem to have popped up overnight. She and her co-workers took them down and turned them over to Vargo Police. Piva says no matter where you live, if you have a concern about your neighborhood, voicing it in the right manner makes all the difference. The signs may be gone from the apartment building, but now they're showing up on social media. People online want some light shed on this sign. It details what gang stalking is and how you can learn more about it. In short, the website says it involves illegal surveillance of individuals by people who threaten, verbally abuse, or commit crimes. But if you take a closer look, it looks to be more of a blog-type site with no hard facts or official information. That's why Emily Piva doubts the danger behind these homemade signs. It was just on a piece of paper, like it was printed off the internet. It wasn't cut like properly, it was cut kind of crooked and jagged, which makes it seem like it is just coming from an individual. Piva says they contacted Fargo police, who said they had never heard of gang stalking either, adding that they weren't looking into any gang stalking activity in this area. There isn't any sort of concern that they need to have as far as safety for the building or any sort of security issues. For people who still might have concerns, Piva stresses communication is key. We love for people to come in and actually physically speak to us in the office. That way we can really measure how big of a concern it is for some people. Um, it's hard to base a concern off of a phone call. Um, if somebody comes in and they are really concerned, we'd like for them to speak to us in person. Um, that way we can reassure them ourselves that it isn't a concern and that we are doing everything we can. I talked to people living in the apartment building where the signs were found, and most of them said they were worried about it at first, but soon realized it was probably the work of one individual, which they say puts their mind somewhat at ease. Stephanie? All right, Cornelius, thank you. If signs like the ones in this story pop up in your neighborhood, you're asked to contact Fargo Police and their non-emergency line. That number can be found on valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. Surveillance video has been released from the burglary at the Kmart in Grand Forks earlier this week. The video shows the burglar wearing what appears to be a dark colored hooded sweatshirt, which was pulled over a head and dark pants. The burglary happened on Tuesday morning. It's unknown how the burglar got into the store. They were able to get away with products from several departments. Anyone with information is asked to contact Grand Forks Police. Moorhead taxpayers have mixed feelings on the upcoming school district referendum. If passed, a homeowner with a $150,000 home will pay $9 a month more in taxes. And if not, the school district says that kids will be the ones to pay. Valley News Team's Macy Enger spoke with those who work in the classroom and those who don't. The proposal calls for, among other things, a new elementary school, in addition to Horizon Middle School, and security upgrades within school buildings. Big palaces are not the answer. Pete Marinucci lives in North Moorhead. He doesn't have any kids in the school district, but he's concerned with how his tax dollars would be used to support the next generations. We need teachers. We need good, good teachers, and uh, we don't need to spend all our money on a big showy building. Other parents are concerned with their kids having to make a move from one school to another. Part of the plan is to move fifth and sixth graders to their own building connected to Horizon Middle School. And yes, maybe it adds a little, you know, they're going from fourth grade then to fifth grade, but they're really going to be on the campus. So that's why we thought that was a good uh, fit. Architects say they designed the new buildings to be cost effective and last in the years to come. We're projecting about a 2% growth a year. District officials say if the $78 million referendum is voted down, they'll have to find a way around it. We will have to increase class sizes. We'll have to be looking at using some of our rooms uh, to teach in art rooms, music rooms. The vote is on November 3rd. In Moorhead, Macy Inger, Valley News Live.
Moorhead isn't the only district looking at a referendum this year. People living in the Dilworth Glendon Felton district will be voting on a $31 million referendum. That vote also takes place November 3rd. In West Fargo, voters will cast their ballot on a $98 million referendum on November 17th. If you want more information on these, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. A North Fargo apartment tenant contacted our whistleblower hotline after she feared facing another North Dakota winter without heat. Angela Pallas says she had no heat all last winter and that it still wasn't working. She also pointed out numerous other problems with her apartment, including mold issues with the stove and cabinets and the screen door that blew off in a storm a few weeks ago. She admits she has a checkered past, but she feels she still deserves a safe, clean home to live in. You know, we're not asking months much. I'm not. Clean carpet, <laughs> uh, plumbing, and fixtures. You know, I'm not asking for the world, but just something to make us feel like we, sh we deserve it. The landlord called us back late this afternoon saying that he had talked to Palace and was going to begin fixing things. He invited us back in a week and we will certainly follow up on this story and bring it to you when we have more. Experts say people with autism are more vulnerable, vulnerable to crime in dangerous situations. A local mom says her biggest concern is children with autism wandering. A new program which was launched in Bismarck is now being presented to Fargo, West Fargo and Moorhead's first responders. It's called Project Lifesaver. The person with autism wears a bracelet and first responders have a receiver. It finds people in a fraction of the time using less manpower and at a cheaper cost. They're usually found within a mile of their homes. They're drawn to water, but we don't always know. And, and those little guys are so fast. <laughs> I mean, it's not... It's not an absent-minded parent. I mean, it's, you're, you're watching them run away and you can't keep up. State funding will now allow people with disabilities in North Dakota to get the bracelet receiver for free. But local emergency responders need to come up with the money to pay for training. The testimony of Hillary Clinton has finally come to a close after almost an entire day in front of the House Select Committee on Benghazi. Our Washington Bureau reporter Peter Zamba has been around the action all day and has more. It's been a long day here in the Longworth House office building, but the questions have been asked and the answers have been given. Some found former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's testimony as satisfactory. Others found the answers inadequate. Still, after all these days and weeks and now years, no one's been held accountable. The 11-hour hearing was full of backhanded comments, unclear questioning, and direct attacks. Some lawmakers still don't think the hearing should have been held in the first place. I think it does say that this is really more about a political agenda than it is about hearing from the Secretary of State. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Congressman Jordan brought particular gusto to his line of questioning, constantly calling for Secretary Clinton to admit to failed policies. Libya was their baby, and now you have a terrorist attack 56 days before an election, uh, and the campaign theme is bin Laden's dead, GM's alive, al-Qaeda's on the run. Congressman Kildee said this hearing will go down as another black mark in House history. Congressman Jordan and Pompeo think otherwise. Why wouldn't you let some neutral third-party judge determine which emails belong to the taxpayers, which ones don't, instead of you making that determination with your lawyers? I think those are very fair questions. There were family members in the room today. I felt a deep commitment to trying to honor them, uh, and I think we did that. On Capitol Hill, I'm Peter Zampa. The committee will now take this testimony and continue working toward the final report. With many more interviews to conduct, though, there is no timeline for the release of this report. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton has asked state railroad inspectors to advance planned safety inspections of tracks where more oil cars are moving through. The governor said today that the inspections will occur almost a month ahead of schedule on routes in and around the Twin Cities. Right now, nearly 11 to 23 crude oil trains per week pass downtown right next to Target Field. BNSF Railway says it's been temporarily rerouting trains because of a construction on a major expansion project. Well, there's no reason for them not to be in communication with us about what they're transporting through our, our state and through our city. The governor also says he wants immediate notification of future hazardous material route changes of magnitude so the state and communities aren't caught off guard. BNSF said the railroad has a strong safety record and continually works to improve it.